Hi, this is the first and occasional series of short videos. Um, there will be no rhyme or reason the topics chosen, just things that have caught my eye science-wise. This one did come out of the final part of Guinea Pigs, Humans and Vampire Bats, where we talked briefly about this rather remarkable shrimp. Uh, this was done in the context of exploding stars and vitamin C, so check out the video if you're interested. It will be published uh, a few days after this one, probably. So why is this creature so remarkable? Why, do, why are Californian fishermen frightened of it? Uh, well, for one thing, it has remarkable eyes that give it a big advantage when hunting its prey. Uh, once said prey has been zeroed in on, it unleashes its raptoral claws, fearsome weapons that can strike literally as fast as a speeding bullet. Uh, There's about 400 species of mantis shrimps, so-called because the way they hold their claws makes them look a bit like a praying mantis. The ant shrimps, and uh, they aren't mantises, but belong to an order called the Stromatopoda. Um, according to Wikipedia, and numerous other sources have tagged along, the ancient Assyrians called them sea locusts. Modern-day Aussies have been known to call them thumb splitters, for reasons that will become obvious. I mentioned a bit earlier, they aren't shrimps, they're crustaceans, a very large group of anthropoids that includes crabs, lobsters and shrimps. As a group, they seem to have diverged from the crustaceans about 400 million years ago. They have remarkable eyes, allowing them to see not only a much wider visual spectrum than humans, but also in polarised light. Uh, you can see prey that appears transparent to humans. Also, each eye can be moved independently, giving a 360 degree view of the animal's surroundings. Another major adaptation is the animal's raptoral claws. They use for spearing or clubbing their prey. They are blindingly fast and powerful. Uh, as I mentioned, there's about 400 species of them, distinguished into two groups depending on the type of claw. One group are spear claws, which are used to stab their victims. The other group do, uses smashers, which do exactly what you'd expect. Um, the first possible sighting of mantis shrimps in the fossil record is from the Silurian to the Carboniferous periods. These are enigmatic fossils called angustidid ontids, which are basically just spine like bits and pieces. Um, beautiful, detailed mantis shrimp fossils from the Mesozoic. Mesozoic era have been found in the Solnorf and lithographic limestone from Bavaria. These are limestones that are so finely grained that they were used for lithography, printing using a stone plate. The Solnhofen and limestones are most famous, of course, for their specimens of Archaeopteryx, which was first found in 1861. In 2010, Hoag et al. described new specimens of Mesozoic mantis shrimps from the Solnhofen. Um, see this paper if you're interested. Okay, raptoral appendages, we can call them claws. Um, a complex muscular structure allows the claws to strike with impressive force. Uh, this is a spearer. The anatomy of a clubber is pretty much similar, except that the dactyl is replaced by a calcified club for smashing up its opponents. Um, the raptoral claw is held back by a muscular spring. There's a lot of energy stored here, and when the claw is released, the strike is impressively fast. Uh, this is not good news for the prey. Both smearers and smashers are capable of unleashing these raptor claws with blinding speed and ferocity, literally as fast as a bullet in flight. The strike is so fast it produces a cavitation bubble ahead of the claw that is a void in the water. When this collapses it produces heat, uh, luminescence and sound. So the prey gets some twice, once by the collapsing sonication bubble, then about 390 to about 400 microseconds later by the claw. Um, Sunny luminescence is the emission of short bubbles of light, a burst of light rather, from imploding bubbles in a liquid when excited by sound. Okay, some nice images here. Uh, the raptoral claw is highlighted in image A with an arrow. And the other pictures show a claw strike against a poor unsuspecting snail. The image was recorded about 0.02 millisecond intervals, and we can see cavitation in the images D through G. Uh, the lighter colour in the cavitation zone may also be from sonoluminescence. Uh, unless I missed it, the paper wasn't very clear about that point. Theoretical models suggest that sonoluminescence arises because the cavitation eats a water molecule, uh, a small number of water molecules, to several thousand degrees, 
producing light as well as heat. Um, it's only a relatively small number of water molecules that heated that much, so the overall temperature change in the cavitation zone is pretty small. So small it hasn't been possible to measure it yet. Peacock mantis shrimp can perceive polarised light, and not only can it extract polarisation information from the light, it can also do so when the light is circularly polarised, an ability unknown outside of a few species of stromatopans. Um, there's lots of videos on YouTube of peacock mantis shrimps dismembering sea life, including creatures that are bigger than it, and you would think more well armoured. I'll leave you to hunt them down. Uh, this is a nice little video before we go on of circularly polarised light and a link to uh, a website which gives you a lot of information on that. Okay, rather than having videos of mantis shrimps dismembering sea life, we now have a video from YouTube user Tweefish focusing on the shrimp's remarkable eyes. binocular vision. Our brain combines two images into one to make uh, a representation of the world. The images that the brain gets from the eyes are slightly different to each other and we work the, the brain works out these small differences to work out how far an object is. Depth perception. That's a useful uh, adaptation for many predators including birds and T-Rex and many others. Our truculent shrimp friends have trinocular vision. They can see an object with three different parts of the same eye, the upper hemisphere, the mid-band and the lower hemisphere. The upshot of this is they can achieve depth perception with either, either eye. Um, the mid-band of each eye consists of about six parallel, consists of six parallel strips. The first four contain eight different types of light-sensitive cell. This allows them to have colour vision that extends into both the UV and the IR regions. Depending on local light conditions, they can use filters to tune individual photoreceptors. Bands 5 and 6 of the mid-band contain cells specialised for detecting polarised light, including circularly polarised light. And as I mentioned, this group is the only animals known to have this ability, which is very useful for them. Um, underwater conditions produce a lot of circularly polarised light, so this adaptation is clearly of benefit to these shrimps. Chu et al. found that certain parts of the shrimp shells also reflect circularly polarised light. Uh, the images here show very different appearance using left and right circularly polarised light. Male and female shrimps have different reflection patterns and these may be used in courtship behaviour. Uh, in this case it involves both circular and linearly polarised light. Uh, the latter, linear polarised light, is a bit of a problem for the squid, for the shrimps rather, since this is, the, this is visible to cuttlefish, squid and octopuses that will prey on the mantis shrimps. Uh, for me, I'm just glad to discover that something does. Uh, mantis shrimps are territorial creatures. Unlike most crustaceans, they actively hunt prey and will engage in sparring contests to decide uh, territorial disputes with other mantis shrimps. Given the fearsome striking power of the raptoral claws, it's not only really surprising that it's done quite carefully. Uh, the combatants take turns in whacking each other's telecins. That's a shield-like areas of the backs of the animal's bodies. Uh, they whack them with their attack claws. Uh, the telecins are a complex structure that's resilient to such, uh, such treatment. After the first round, the shrimps flip over, with the original defender now going on the attack. This continues until one of them has established his dominance, but done without death or serious injury to any participant, either participant. Okay, uh, mantis shrimps common in Japanese cuisine, often boiled or eaten sushi, uh, or sushi topping rather, and occasionally raw or sashimi. Uh, they're also quite common in Cantonese cuisine. Uh, they're set to taste more like lobster than shrimp, and I claim to be delicious. Uh, certainly never had one. Not yet, anyway. Okay, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed that.